Next up is Mary, an insurance broker from Toronto. I guess I kind of fell into being an insurance broker, but food is my passion. It's all I think about all day. I'm here for me and I'm here for my mom. I was raised by a single mother. I can't express to anybody how awesome she is. I've always tried to help her and really I took over the kitchen. Mary's been cooking for me and the whole family since she was about eight years old. I've always kind of done the, the right and responsible things. Mom, awesome. you're a terrible high fiver, but I love you so much. <laughs> but this is my dream and this is my time. Now it's time to see if Mary can earn three S's and a coveted white apron from the judges. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? My name's Mary. And what are you cooking for us today? Uh, lemon meringue pie. Sounds lovely. You've got a little less than five minutes to get it done. Okay, perfect. Mary, when did you start cooking? I started cooking when I was about four years old. Why did you start so late? <laughs> so late? Actually, I was in a, uh, my family was in a car accident when I was four. Uh, my mom and brother were both seriously injured. I wasn't. My dad passed away in the accident. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. I'm an A-type personality, so I always want to be there for people, and it's just kind of how I show them how I care. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance broker, which uh, helped me when I wrecked my first uh, pie tart back out there. So I had insurance, and I made a second one. What's your culinary dream? I would love to run a catering business. I love sharing my food with people that I care about, and I want people to understand that you can make really good food at home and have a great time while you're making it. I say the same. Yeah. There's my dish. <laughs> well, right off the top, you put together a dish that looks, I think, absolutely wonderful. Let's have a taste. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Rich, creamy meringue, the zingy, fresh flavors with the berries, that crunchy texture of the spun sugar, and the crispiness of that pastry. Just a wonderful, wonderful dessert. Thank you. <laughs> For me, a lemon meringue, the hardest part is to make sure that the fill is not lumpy. Let me give it a try. Wow. <laughs> Smooth as silk. <laughs> Spit of meringue here. <laughs> Got the right consistency. Maybe a little bit more color burnt to, you know, to take a little bit away from the sugar, but this is amazing. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. This meringue is delicious, but it's very rich. Yes. In order for this to work, the tart needs to be tart. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Well, Mary, I think we're gonna keep this short and sweet. For me, it's a hands down yes. Okay. Yes. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> I'm no fool. When I see talent, I know it, and you have that talent. So it's a yes. Oh my God. Come up here and grab okay. your apron. Ah! <laughs> I bet you got so many people running at you. Thank you. Oh my God. We're excited ah, to see what you do next. Okay. You have really earned this. Thank you. So, welcome Thank you so to much. MasterChef Canada. I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel like I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be like, oh, this never happened. But it is happening and I am so excited. The judges have been observing and tasting throughout the challenge. They now take one final look before choosing the most promising dishes. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. The first home cook we like to call up was not afraid to take a risk. Call my name, call my name, call my name. Thinking like subliminal messages. That home cook is... Dr. Sean. Put your dish up to the front. It's a tart with a maple pastry cream, a meringue on top, and blueberry coulis. So refresh my memory. You're not a baker, right? Never made a tart in my life. It's 
pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Just the way the flavors all come together, the tart is crispy, it's well balanced, it's not too sweet. Great job. Thank you so much. Chef Alvin, the man who does not like desserts. Why does everybody think I don't like desserts? <laughs> is it because I'm not a sweet guy? <laughs> John, you might have converted me. It's got very nice balance. It's sweet, but I can taste the maple. Beautifully done on the pie crust, crispy. The meringue could have been improved. If you get a stiffer meringue, you can probably get a bit more char in it. Overall, you deliver. You deliver. Well done. Thank you. The next home cook that we'd like to call up took a risk with some unusual flavor combinations. I feel like they're talking about me. I'm almost ready to pick up my plate. The home cook that made that dish is... Mary. This is a pan-seared Arctic char with a blueberry wine reduction and a carrot puree. Blueberries an Arctic char. I've never had that before. It's fantastic. I love the balance that you've achieved here. The Arctic char is perfect to medium rare, and the berries cut right through that. Thank you. Mary, if this is a taste of what's to come, I'm very excited, really sincerely. Thank you so much. Presentation, I think, is outstanding. Just wonderful. This is a really well-balanced red wine sauce. You intensified those aromatic notes of the cassis, the vanilla, that work incredibly well with these wonderful East Coast blueberries from Nova Scotia. You're cooking with the mind of a chef. Thank you. Mary, please bring up your cupcakes. It's really important for me to do well. I don't want to let the judges down. Walk me through it. A s'more cupcake with a chocolate sponge flavored with a bit of vanilla and a Swiss meringue on top. Over here, mocha and Swiss buttercream. And then a coconut cupcake with a little bit of lime zest. That's the one I'm going to try. Look at that. It is absolutely delicious. Beautiful, big, crispy coconut flakes. The lemon gives it a little bit of freshness. I think the appearance is monochromatic. They need a little bit of color. I love marshmallow, so that's the one I'm gonna try. Earthy, dark chocolate. Perfect! Thank you so much. I'm feeling happy and I'm feeling confident. Vince, please bring up your Tower of Cupcakes. I made my cupcakes just thinking of my girls. A lot of color, a lot of sprinkles. The bases are all chocolate. One is filled with cream cheese. The other one is a chocolate chip peppermint. The pink one there, a cherry topping. Very subtle with the mint, not too overpowering. You know, the chocolate and mint, it's a classic combination. Overall, the decoration, it's a little homey. The piping is sort of child's play-like. The sponge cake feel a little dense because I think it struggled to rise. Thank you very much, Vince. Thank you. It tastes a lot better than it looks. It's well balanced, it's not too sweet. These cupcakes, they're perfect if you're home on a Sunday afternoon with your daughters. But in this kitchen, they just might not be enough. Judges had a couple bad things to say about my cupcakes, feeling pretty nervous.
While some of you impressed us with your skill and innovation, we witnessed a few missteps, and some serious enough to send someone home. We need a moment to discuss. Look, some interesting cupcakes there. Huh? That wasn't one that was absolutely perfect, yeah. spot on. Sean nailed the flavor. But it lacked the refinement. I know that Sean Hickey's cupcakes aren't as refined as well, but I just have to be better than Sean Hickey. It's pretty clear. I would agree. Everything's on the line. I might be going home. Making a stunning cupcake tower in only 90 minutes is a daunting challenge. But two home cooks served us cupcakes tonight that would look right at home in the window of any gourmet bakery. One of those home cooks wowed us with sophisticated flavors that were all the more surprising because she couldn't even taste them. Jacqueline, congratulations. Thank you. Please take your apron off and head upstairs. A huge weight has come off of my shoulders, top 12. I proved to myself that I can do this and that I deserve to be here. Mary, your expertise was unmistakable. Your cupcakes were innovative, delicious, and quite frankly, the best we've ever tasted. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, please take off your apron and head upstairs. Thank you. Thank you. I need to make sure that I stay on my game and keep pushing myself. You're only as good as your last dish. I'm making my take on fish and chips. I'm gonna use pickerel, because it reminds me of my dad and, and going fishing with him when I was a kid. I'm channeling my dad today. The first time I cooked with these ingredients in the first mystery box, I made a really homey plate, but I didn't win. Today, I wanna take a humble idea and elevate it to MasterChef Canada quality. Mary has gone with a pickerel. The amount of work it takes to clean, fillet, and make sure you get every single bone out, that is gonna chew up a ton of the cooking time for Mary. Oh, yes. I'm definitely taking a risk. Let's talk. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hi there, Mary. Hi, Chef. So, trip down memory lane with these 13 <laughs> ingredients? Uh, it is, definitely. So how do you plan to cook the pickerel? So I'm doing a take on, on fish and chips. Fish and chips do not sound elevated and sophisticated, given the audience that you're cooking for today. I'm going to do a little light batter with some of the, the Pinot Grigio. I'm also doing a blueberry zucchini tomato ketchup. Wow. And instead of capers in my tartar sauce, I'm doing a pickled lentil. When you look at the plate, it won't seem like fish and chips. So I'll let you carry on and Thank look you. forward to trying your reinvented fish and chips. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much, Thank you, Chef. Mary. Good luck. OK. So Mary is stewing a dish. It is a take on fish and chips. Did I just hear you say fish and chips? That's exactly what I said. Fish and chips for 13 of the most influential chefs in the country. But she promises me this is going to be a fish and chips that has a twist like you've never seen before. Woo! Ouch. This is literally the tightest for time I've ever been in this competition. Mary is starting to feel the pressure, the stress. I need to get my fish on ASAP. Things are piling up for her. I just can't fry them all at the same time. They're all stuck. It's just stuck. Um, the amount of work I have left to do seems literally impossible. I am literally falling apart, and I hate it. I really just want to sit down and give up. One of my biggest flaws is wanting everything to go perfectly. I just need to keep telling myself nothing's gonna go perfectly. And I just need to get these plates done. Yeah. 15 minutes! You should be plating soon! I only have 15 minutes left, and that's less than a minute per plate. But I'm gonna get everything on the plate if it's the end of me. Oh, I'm so sweaty. I'm really worried. I don't have time. Look at those plates from Matthew. Absolutely stunning. He's got it all figured out. Look, one piece at a time. He's going down the line. 16 plates. I'm the strongest plater here, and this is going to get me into the finale. Yeah, she needs to hustle. She is really up against the clock here. You have five minutes left! 
They're all feeling the pressure. You can see it in their faces. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm really worried about Jeremy's gnocchi. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough for 16 portions. Not going to have enough. Fuck. One minute, the server will be picking up the plates. There's something about Mary. Well, she won't give up. Look at Jeremy. The servers are ready to pick up Jeremy's plate, and he's not ready to go. We're all fighting for those two spots, and uh, I worked as hard as I could, and I tried my best to get everything on the plates. I was ready to give up, but I'm really happy with the fact that I got done. I want this. <laughs> um, I really want this. The 16 dishes that you created tonight demonstrated your incredible growth during this competition. But as you know, only one home cook can win this Mystery Box Challenge and advance directly to the MasterChef Canada Finale. I really want it to be me. I want to see my name on a chef's jacket. Choosing that home cook was a very tough decision. But after weighing every element on your plates, one dish stood out. I am so close. I'm really hoping that my dish edged them out. And that dish was made by... Mary. Oh my god! Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Mary, please come up and get your chef jacket. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I have a white jacket! I think I'm dreaming, but I don't want to wake up because it's the best thing ever. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Amazing job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. Mary, congratulations. An amazing job. Thank you so much, Chef. Please head on up to the gallery. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Mary. After everything that has happened, all of the blood and sweat and burns and tears, Putting on that jacket just felt right. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Mary, please bring yours up. So this is my take on surf and turf. It's a seared beef tenderloin with fried oysters and an arugula and sea asparagus pesto. It's a beautifully composed plate on every level, but I know right now you're absolutely agonizing, wondering, what is happening inside this piece of meat here? I am just cringing, waiting to see the center. Perfect medium. All right, let's dig in. Mary, the ingredients that you chose to put on this dish, I think were well thought out, they work together, and it's a fun play on surf and turf. The oyster, briny, salty, added that wonderful savory pop. A lovely, thoughtful, excellently executed dish. Thank you. Mary, each individual component was perfect. The leek onion ring, I mean, that is genius. The uh, pesto, sea asparagus, something very unique and something I would be proud to serve in my restaurant. Thanks very much. You know, Mary, I think you found your niche. Taking the old school and bringing it to the new school. It's such a beautifully composed plate in terms of the combination of flavors, presentation, the sea asparagus with the arugula and a pesto. That's the first time I've ever had those two together and they work brilliantly. It's pretty outstanding. It really is. Thank you. We need a moment to discuss. Thank you. Thank you, chefs. Mary's dish was very close to perfect. Jeremy, his four individual plates, I was just blown away by the caliber of his presentation, the variety and complexity of the dishes. I think two of those dishes that he produced were knockouts absolute knockouts. However, Jeremy, I think, set himself up in some ways for more criticism because he chose to do four different dishes. Mary chose one dish, which I think she nailed on every level. I hope we're gonna get more clarity in the dessert round. 
I hope so too. We have to. I feel like I took this round. Everything went well together. In my mind, the winner of the entree round is me. It's all down to dessert, and uh, I'm good with desserts. So far, you've both delivered knockout appetizers and entrees. Now it's time for your desserts. Jeremy, what are you planning for your dessert? Milk tea panna cotta with coconut tapioca and jackfruit ice cream. My inspiration for this is my mom. She cooked with all of these flavors. Jackfruit was her favorite. What about you, Mary? What's the dish that you're going to make? A blueberry financier uh, with a buttermilk corn ice cream. This dessert just makes me think of driving up to the cottage with my family and stopping to get corn on the side of the road and, and going to our favorite blueberry lady. You now have 60 minutes to make us a world-class dessert. I got my white apron with dessert. I know it's going to win it for me. Baking comes second nature to Mary, so it's gonna take very bold flavors to beat her. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Right now I'm working on my financier getting the dry ingredients all ready. It's like a pound cake. It's a little bit lighter. There's egg whites that are folded into it. She's pairing that with blueberries and a corn ice cream. I think this sounds actually very intelligent. Corn and blueberries just kind of make sense to me. They both grow at similar times, so Mother Nature wants them to be eaten together. Jeremy, on the other hand, he's doing something that I think sounds really quite adventurous. I'm making a milk tea panna cotta and a jackfruit ice cream. Panna cotta. It, it essentially means cooked cream. So you have to warm up your cream base, flavor it, add gelatine to the warm panna cotta mixture. You then need to strain it, and then it has to set and chill. Jeremy. Hi, Jeff. Do you feel like the underdog in the dessert competition? I've always felt like the underdog, especially when it came to baking, but more so now that I'm going up against Mary. This is beautiful. Look at that. Fresh jackfruit. You are really cooking with the Philippines in mind and your mother in mind. Yes, Incredible. all these flavors, every single component on the, this dish reminds me of her. Good luck. Thank you. Mary, Hello. how are you doing? Are you feeling confident? I am feeling confident. I'm confident with my flavors. It's gonna be tasty and different. How do you feel about what Jeremy's doing? His dessert sounds incredible. It does sound incredible, and it's a lot of flavors I've never worked with before. He has a beautiful, beautiful palette. I'm gonna have to run to the blast chiller, I'm sorry. Um, don't drop it. I'm worried, I'm worried about this. She's got to get here fast, and that's going to burn. Are you concerned about this at all? No, no? this is actually okay. doing exactly what I wanted to okay, do. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second. <laughs> this is uh, just cream with a bit of sugar and salt, and I'm cooking the heck out of it. It's a brown butter crumb to go under my ice cream. It's really tasty, hmm. trust me. How close do you think this competition is right now? Super close. Super close. Like, super close. And I am feeling it. I'm going to let you focus on your dessert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Plating. The whole competition is riding on this dessert. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. Running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this and they don't. I am so happy with my final dish. This dessert is beautiful, and it's exactly how I wanted it to look. I've never plated a dessert this beautiful before. This dessert shows how far I've come. Jeremy, please bring up your dishes. Milk tea panna cotta. On top is a coconut tapioca topped with fried plantains with a jackfruit ice cream. Well, Jeremy, I think you've created something that is completely and utterly original. 
So let's dig in. You know, Jeremy, all that different texture is coming together. You know, to me, that is genius. This is not at all too sweet, too sour. It's very difficult to bake panna cotta with milk tea because it has to be very, very strong. And of course, being at the bottom of the dessert, so you're gonna hit that last. Now, that, I guess you could have made that slightly stronger, heavier on the teeth, but I just want to take spoonful and spoonful. I love it. Thank you, chef. When I watched you prepare it and I heard you describe it, I didn't understand it. I don't like this at all. I love it. Thank you. It speaks to me in so many different levels. Texturally, it's incredibly advanced. The flavors just keep changing and morphing. The top layer has that beautiful tapioca, which I love. And then when you think you figured it out, you dig a little deeper and you find this beautiful tea and milk panna cotta. I've never had anything like it. You took all the flavors that your mom introduced to you and you've just created a new dessert. Incredible. Thank you, chef. It is so light and so unique and interesting. The tapioca pearls have a wonderful mouthfeel. You sort of want them to dance around on your palate as you taste that little bit of coconut. You then have that refreshing citrus layer that is so bright and clean, yet still light. This is a great dessert. Thank you, chef. Mary, please bring your dessert up. I made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. You know, Mary, the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> All the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The Panencia cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with popcorn. It feels like a road trip. Going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. You both prepared absolutely stunning three-course meals, and you've made choosing a winner a near-on impossible task. But tonight, one of you will become Canada's next master chef. And we need to decide who that's going to be. So please head back to the kitchen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, chefs. Thank you. We find ourselves in a very difficult situation because this is the closest competition we have ever seen. This was about the entire process, but they were both very good very creative, very innovative. So I'm torn right now. I think without doubt, it is the toughest. Jeremy started off with the bison tataki, and then that modern sushi bowl. And then finally, that beautiful comfort dessert with all those southeastern tropical flavors with memories of his mother. My menu may be a little ambitious, but you gotta reach for the stars. The title is gonna be mine. I think I deserve it, and I think I've proved it. Mary took us on a Canadian road trip. She started off with an elevated take on borscht, which was delicious, and then she moved into a beautiful take on surf and turf, served with crispy oysters, crispy leeks, that potato and onion puree, and then she moved into that beautiful blueberry and corn dessert. I'm going to win this because I know my flavors and I, I finally have a clear culinary voice. It's a teeter tata a couple of missteps in each course. If you had to eat one of those three course meals, Again, which one would it be? Mary or Jeremy? If I could pick both, I would. Mary 
and Jeremy, you both made the decision to follow your culinary dreams. And those dreams led you here to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Week after week, you braved some of the most punishing challenges that we've ever seen in this competition. But the two of you survived. In fact, you flourished, growing by leaps and bounds with each challenge, and presenting us with the finest dishes we've seen in the history of MasterChef Canada. You have now reached a level of skill and artistry that has earned you a place on this stage. Please come up and change places with us. Winning today would be just the beginning. The MasterChef Canada title would change my whole life. I want this so badly. Winning this would be so amazing. Tonight, you both took us on a flavor journey that honored your cultural backgrounds and your families. Every course demonstrated that both of you cook with skill and heart. The three of us struggled to reach a consensus. Unfortunately, only one of you could win $100,000, this trophy, and the life-changing MasterChef Canada title. We agreed that one home cook created a menu that was slightly more cohesive and satisfying. This year's winner and Canada's new MasterChef is... Mary. That's a wonderful job. Every good emotion that anyone in the world has ever felt is me right now. <laughs> this trophy represents everything I've learned and everything that is about to happen. I'm the first lady MasterChef Canada. Yes, it's me. 